Welcome, welcome to Between the Covers, the show for readers and writers and lovers of books. I'm Stephanie Larkin, author, publisher, book developer, and head penguin of Red Penguin Books. We're a publishing company that publishes books of all types and genres. So whether you have a manuscript ready to go or a book that's been stuck in your head for the past decade, just visit redpenguinbooks.com and we can help to unleash your inner author. A big thanks to our sponsor, Don Pablo Coffee. All my authors out there and voracious readers know that sometimes you just have to stay up all night to catch what goes on at the end. Don Pablo Coffee should be your cup of coffee when you've got a book in your hand. We have an amazing show tonight with um, an author and for the first time ever, we actually have fairies on the show. We have the book fairies who are making sure that books are given to people in need all over. So please welcome author Debbie DeLuise. And, and from the book fairies, Amy Zaslansky and Eileen Minogue. Well, before we get started, I want to I welcome you to the Between the Covers family. And we even have membership cards. And what does a membership card get you? Well, all of our authors graciously donate a book to our Between the Covers library that we can give out because people borrow books from us all the time. So if you would like to be a Between the Covers book club member, go to betweenthecoverstv.com and sign up. You'll be getting free books. You can come and get free wine. You'll be getting news from all of our authors that have been featured here and from the book fairies about all of their various events and book drives. So betweenthecoverstv.com to sign up. That's also where you can watch past episodes. So if you miss some of this, I don't know if there's a big game on tonight that you have to catch, you can always catch us at betweenthecoverstv.com. And since I have people who love to read and love making sure other people read, I gathered a couple of facts about reading. And it's really crazy on Google when you Google something like odd facts about reading, what comes up. So Bobby, let's look at our first slide about interesting facts about reading. The three most read books in the world, the Bible, mm -hmm. quotations from Chairman Mao Tsing Tsung, and Harry Potter. Which one of those three surprised you? The middle one. <laughs> 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 Covered the other two, but haven't hit the middle one. Yeah, yet. yeah, I no. bet. And, and you collect books. You've not gotten a copy of that one yet? Um, no, we've, we've had millions of books come through our warehouse. Uh, I'm going to have to start looking for that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one of the most read books, and amazingly, didn't get one yet, huh? People keep it. And they keep it. Right. They keep it for themselves. 68% um, of books sold worldwide are bought by women. I believe that. Do you believe that? I don't. Yeah. I don't know. My husband buys more books than me easily. Really? He reads, like, really? constantly. So I guess he's the exception of the rule. Very, very cool. And there is a Japanese word, um, saduko, which means to let reading materials pile up in one's home and never read it. <laughs> and never read them again? And or never just read them never even read the first them time. The first time. time. And never gorgeous. even read them the first time. Did you I ever buy a book it. that you didn't read? I have a lot of books I haven't read. Well, yes. you know who's sitting next to you is the book fairy. You can so, donate those books to us. Absolutely. So <laughs> if, you have books, if you have books piling up in your house, we're going to be talking a lot about what you can do with those books. Because I, I think we all do. So many people have books in their homes that they don't need anymore, mm -hmm. either that they've read or they've bought and they never will read. Right. But I know we get a lot of books for our kids, and they never make their way through them, so never. they're still never. sitting they're on the bookcases. They're brand new. The binding has not even been broken yet. Right, right. Well, we, we have know a where to go place with that. for those. Absolutely. Our next slide, which is really interesting to hear, that reading, what is this? Oh. It's not the slide I thought it was. <laughs> okay. People who read are more likely to vote, exercise, and to be more cultured. Yes, 100%. So since that's absolutely going to help our world, if people are voting, <laughs> exercising, we could all... So this is good. Our show here, Encouraging Reading, and you and in the libraries are making for a better future. In order for people to read, they have to be literate. Yes. And for people that are literate and moving through the grades and then going on to higher education and getting better jobs, that's typically where you'll see people that are spending more money, paying their taxes. Right. Voting, voting. interested in, in so it all stems the from state that of society. basic so, form of literacy. So read. Absolutely. What's that our next one, Bobby? 
That's okay. Reading can help to prevent Alzheimer's disease. Stimulates the mind. So let's all read. <laughs> yeah. I'm all for that. What our next one I really liked. That reading makes you appear sexier. <laughs> Especially to hmm. women. So if 68% of the books, so that those few books, what is that? 32% uh, of the books bought by men? Keep buying them, men, because it really is helping. And or I just guess... just on your book side, night side table. And I guess that's where you're supposed to meet people is the bookstore. <laughs> and our final one, which I had heard in a number of different studies, reading fiction books helps with your ability to empathize with others. Of course, even more than nonfiction. And it's funny because, I mean, I love fiction and nonfiction. You're a fiction writer, which I'm so thrilled to have you on. Um, when I write, I write nonfiction because I, I do so much uh, business writing kind of a thing. And, you know, sometimes in our grades nowadays, they are really pushing the nonfiction reading. And I get that it's fact based, but it's the fiction that makes us learn empathy and learn human nature because and people identify with characters exactly exactly yeah. so it's so important for our schools not to think that that fiction is just fluff that's that's the way a lot of educational programs are fiction is fluff we should read these good solid non-fiction books we should read biographies and we should read histories and we should read and i love them but fiction is what makes us a better human being so I'm delighted to have a fiction author on with us today and somebody who writes also about cats and I think we should all learn to love our animals as much as anything. <laughs> I guess you have cats. I have three cats. You have three I cats. I adopted two kittens in October and they're, they're so adorable. I got them from the Golden Paw Society. Oh, very nice. Yes. And they're nine months old now and they'll be a year in July. Love it. I love it. And I have a 10-year-old cat. We lost a 17-year-old Siamese last year. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry but now we, we have three. We had two. Now we have three. All right. Well, we're going to hear from our sponsors, and we'll be back with Debbie to hear about her books. All right. <laughs> you had a picture. Do you have a book, either in your head or on your desk, just waiting to get out to anxious readers? Hi, I'm Stephanie Larkin, author, book developer, and head penguin at Red Penguin Books. We're a publishing company specializing in books of all genres and publishing in all formats, including digital, audible, and print books. From business books to romance, memoirs to mysteries, our authors have complete control over their books from start to print. We'll help get your book to booksellers all around. Major booksellers such as Amazon, Apple, Kobo, Walmart, even libraries and bookstores around the world. We believe in our authors. So call or email today to get your free publisher's packet to get started. Just visit us at redpenguinbooks.com and get your book out there and into the hands of your readers. At Red Penguin Books, you call all the shots. So call us today and turn your dreams into a reality. Welcome back. Yay. Welcome back to Between the Covers. I'm sitting here with author Debbie DeLuise, who 
We have an entire table full of your books here. You like to write. <laughs> yes, I do. I love to write. Absolutely. Yes. Now, I, I grabbed one of these books. Mm -hmm. This is not your most recent. This is That's the first of a series. The first of a series. Yes. So the series is called? Is the Cobble Cove Cozy Mystery Series. Okay. And now, why Cobble Cove Cozy Mystery? Tell me a little bit well, about that. Well, Cobble Cove is the town in the book. Okay. And it's an upstate New York town. It's a small town. If people who read Cozy Mysteries they know that uh, they're usually based in small towns. There's a library and a librarian and a library cat. Always a cat. Yes. Always a cat. Here's a picture, by the way, if we can see, of uh, Harry and Hermione. I love that she's an author, and she has an author and librarian who has cats named Harry and Hermione. That's just fabulous. So in the book series, there's a cat. Yes, Sneaky. Sneaky? Sneaky the library cat. Now, you said this book is the one that won the award? No. The no. current the, the current one recent won book, there's four in the series. Okay. Uh, that was the first in the series that introduces the characters. Okay. And, uh, and that was this award from? Yes. Oh, That's I love this. That's from the Cat Writers Association. I didn't even know before I met you that there was such a thing as the Cat Writers Association. I love that. It's, it's this year they're celebrating their 25th anniversary. Oh. And there are nonfiction as well as fiction authors. Okay. Anyone who writes about cats, they don't have to write books. They could be magazine articles. Actually, that's how I got started. I started writing magazine articles. I wrote for Cat Fancy. And uh, oh, be when magazine. magazines were, were more in print than they right. are right now, they're mostly online. But then I have written for Catster.com. I won a, an award for that uh, about two years ago. So you, my article on you've grooming. had cats your whole life, or is this? A I grew up thing? with cats. We always had cats in my house. We had dogs as well, but I was very close to the cats, and I've always in, enjoyed cats. I have a cat named Clover, and Aww. she is about as fat as this entire <laughs> table. She is the fattest thing. Aww. She's fabulous. So uh, I had the joy of reading pretty your, name, cute name. Your your newest book, and I know we don't have a copy of the book here, but that's coming a, out in May. This is coming out in May. I got a sneak preview, so I was very excited. But this is the book that's coming out in May, and where will this be available? It will be on Amazon. Fantastic. All my books are on Amazon. Terrific. Uh, and it'll be an ebook as well as paperback. Wonderful. People have Kindles, or you can read it. Uh, now, this is iPad. not part of the series. This no, is a this is a standalone. I have two other standalone books. Okay. Okay. The the series has four books. I also have a a paranormal romance, which actually was the very first book I self-published, but now I have a publisher, so right. it's reprinted. Very nice. I have a standalone mystery thriller. Okay. And this is a standalone psychological mystery. Ooh. And okay. it, it's different from my books, right. uh, my cozy mystery series. Right. Uh, it starts. Uh, it features a um, a young woman who, uh, 20 years ago, she she grew up in South Carolina. She and her brother found a body near a lighthouse, which is featured predominantly in the yes. book. Um, and 20 years later, she's invited back. Uh, the body was of a young man who stayed at their inn. I don't want to give the story away. Nope, nope, but, not at all. We just but want to wet their whistle. There is a mystery, and uh, it goes back and forth in time. Yes. The, in, in the, um, currently, it's told in first person by the girl, Sarah. Right. As it goes back 20 years ago, it's third person, and there's different viewpoints from mm -hmm. the different characters of what's going on. And then it all comes together. I like reading books like that. Absolutely, so like me too. I've been enjoying Seascope so much. Thank you. So what got you started writing? Have you been writing since you were a little girl? I've always enjoyed writing. I, I, when I was younger, I loved to read, of course. That's the big thing, reading. That's why I became a librarian as well. I love that. And you're going to tell us a little bit about that, too. But I, before I wanted to become a librarian, I wanted to be a writer. Really? Yes. Okay. Ever since I was very young, you know, people, in my family encouraged me. Uh, my teachers, they, they said I had talent in writing. And I uh, wrote about, I, I keep diaries. I was always writing and uh, creative writing in school. And then I, uh, when I went to college, I worked on the student newspaper. So I was a features writer. Oh, wow. Yes. And uh, I won an award for that, <laughs> the Lobo Award. It was the sophomore when I was right, in my right. sophomore year. Then I went to uh, library school at the Palmer School, CW Post. Very nice. And 
at that time I started writing, when I graduated from the Palmer School, I started writing articles. And I learned about the Cat Writers Association. Of right. course, I've always, like I said, I always, had, always cats. had cats. Right. So I said, this would be the perfect group for me. And it was the first writing group I ever joined. And, but the requirement to join was two published articles. And I had never published anything other than my writing on the student newspaper. Right, right. So this encouraged me to send my material out. Fantastic. And then Cat, and then I, I published in different newsletters, uh, you know, Cat Fancy Magazine. And I wrote about my cats. And they published, you know, but I researched. Right, I, they right. They were medical, veterinary. I, I interviewed vets. Uh, so they were, you know, nonfiction. They were articles. Right, right. And, uh, but I was always writing fiction as well as that because I was always reading and I admired different authors and I wanted to emulate them. Right. So that was my dream to be well, a writer. Who were your favorites that you were thinking well, about? Well, back then I used to like to read, well, I went through a phase when I was in my teens where I wanted to, I read Phyllis Whitney, gothic romance. Okay. I was really into that. And that's why some of my books are sort of like that, some of them. But then I went through the cozy mystery phase where I read, and I have some of the recommendations oh, good, here good. because they are also members of the Cat Writers Association, oh, and I, I met that. some of them in person. Some of these authors, isn't that great? So, that somebody you're admiring and emulating, then you get to meet them. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Ah. Oh. And so then I started. Um, I wrote the first book I self-published after my cat passed away, and I put him in the book. And then, you know, years later, I didn't write for a while, but I was working at the library full time. I had my daughter, so I didn't have a lot of time to write. But then one of the patrons at the library who had read my book said, you should continue writing. I really like your, your stuff. So I, it took me a while, but I started writing again. And then I wrote my first Cobble Cove mystery, right. Stone's Throw. And I had a lot of people tell me. I, I had people really complimenting me on it and writing good reviews. And then I decided to write another. I, I thought of that first as just a standalone. Oh, okay, so it wasn't in your mind. I didn't part think of about writing series. a series. Okay. But then I kind of characters grew on me, and I saw where I could continue the storyline. So I wrote Between a Rock and a Hard Place, okay. which is the second one. Right. The characters change. You know, they develop. Some leave, and I add characters. But I have Sneaky because he's the main cat character in the book. My latest book, the fourth in the series, introduces another cat to the series. Oh, is that that pretty one on the cover? The Calico. Yes. yes. So wait, I have, uh, to show, I have to show I that had, book. I had a contest. I, I love this a, cover. <laughs> I have a newsletter, and I had a contest. And I had people send in pictures of the cats and suggest names for the cat. Oh, what a great idea. And the cat that won, it was actually a woman who worked in a library, which was ironic. That's very ironic. I chose her name randomly, actually. But Kitty Kai was the winner, ah. and it was a cat, um, so and it, it's in the, st I use that cat in the story, oh. and she has a calico. And then that's when I got Harry and Hermione, just right after that book right was published. Right after this book was published. Yes. I, I, and I said, this is ironic that I would now have a calico. Yes. Because I've never in my life, I've had so many different cats, and I've had black cats, I've had a lot of great cats, Siamese. Siamese. Right. I've had all types of cats. I, this is my first calico. Oh, that's fabulous. So. I love that. And I love your story of how you, you know, were in and your, your path kind of wove around. It is. It's, it's, there are a lot of things that happen that, you know, you look back and you right, say, right. you know, how it all came together. And that's how my books, I write my books. I'm, they call it a pansta. Because yeah. I don't have outlines at the beginning. I okay. have ideas for characters. And I do base some of my characters on people I know. Mm -hmm. But I change them and I, I, I use, you know, different people. But I, the storyline, the plot, I have an idea in my mind. But basically, I just write. And somehow, like, I ended up killing somebody in one of my books. I had never, <laughs> never planned to kill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard of people say that when they write. In yes, that, the characters know, take over. They, they'll actually say, can, I can't believe Vicky just did that. I'm saying, uh, they, you're typing. <laughs> you're the one, that you're the one who did it. And they say, no. It's a very, um, you, when you write, like, I write early in the morning. And okay. it's like a non, it's not a, con you're, you're conscious, but you're not. I don't take a lot of time to read over what I'm writing. I just write, let it flow. And I find that's better. And then later on you go and you edit, edit, you can go through many, right, many right. drafts. Oh, many drafts. You have Absolutely. to. 
But the ideas come together if you just let them go. If you concentrate too much, if you think too much, right. it may not work out the same. Right, I, right. I, I believe anyway. I mean, so you've actually surprised yourself. Killed oh, somebody. Uh, several times. <laughs> I've married people off. I've you, had, you had people no idea. fall in love. I've had people kill one wild? another. Yeah. It's I would think that if you're the one at the typewriter, you have it in your mind the direction. No. But I've heard of going. this, and I've I've heard had other authors on the show who write like that, and they get shocked. I can't believe she just did that. <laughs> How could uh, you be it's shocked? It's going into like another like another world. It's yeah, like, like you're almost in. It's like, like you're, you're not, your fingers yeah. writing trance. Right, like a yeah, writing that trance. Type of thing. Yes. I think mm -hmm. that's so amazing. Cool. I love that. Well, we all need to get into that trance. That sounds yeah. fabulous. Well, I know that this one is coming out next in month. It, yes. Now, have you started another one? I mean, it sounds like you just keep writing and writing and writing. I have an unpublished uh, first of a cozy. Okay. That I'm, I'm, I've been querying agents for this one. Okay. And I have some ideas for the new <gasps> series. It's so a new a series. A whole lot of, more. Of course, there are cats in it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't give it away. No, uh, you don't have to give it away. I I'm have just glad another. You give it, more. I have another mystery standalone. Okay. That's uh, maybe three quarters of the way written. Oh. Okay. I had to put it on hold. I go back. This one right. I went back back after three years. Okay. Some of them have to sit because yes. when my other books come out I have to promote them. Of There's course. a lot involved. I have ma lots of manuscripts written that aren't on computer. Okay. Then I have ones that are. So I have a lot of stuff. So there's plenty more in them. <laughs> there's a lot more. <laughs> Debbie, do you have a website that you could tell us about so we can go? DebbieDLouise.com. DebbieDLouise.com. That's easy enough. Well, we're going to take a break for just a moment, and I'm going to ask Debbie for the Debbie D. Louise autograph mm -hmm. on this book that you'll be able to borrow if you're in the Between the Covers Club. We'll see you in just a moment. <laughs> are you a tie lover? You love the diversity in tie because they come in different colors, fabrics, patterns, etc. Get access to a wide variety of neckties. Buy from or trade with other tie lovers. Don't wear ties anymore? You have more ties than you know what to do with? Want to turn all those ties into real money? Do you just need a tie? You just need a tie for a special occasion. Now you can buy a tie today and sell it tomorrow. The Necktie Exchange, the online retailer where you buy, sell, and trade neckties. Register today. to Between the Covers. We're so excited to have you, and we are so excited tonight to have the Book Fairies. Founder Amy Zaslansky is here with us, along with the Executive Director Eileen Minogue, to tell us all about what the Book Fairies does and how we can help. Amy, I am so excited. You have no idea. I've been like posting all over the place. The book fairies are going to be on the show. I was almost expecting you to come on with wings. <laughs> well, my, my wings are tucked behind me. You tucked know, you behind can't you. have them out all the time. Well, it's very you know, uncomfortable. Be, don't be surprised if at Halloween I don't buy you a pair just so that we can. That would be amazing. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Oh, please. Really I'm appreciate thrilled. it. So tell uh, us how this all started and what, what you do and what we can do. Yeah, fantastic. So. Basically, it started more as a whim that I, I had found out that there were teachers in Hempstead 
a local town that was in need of books and they were looking to raise money to buy books to send the kids home with something to read over the summer because of the summer reading slide. I have three children. We have tons of neighborhood kids in my area. Right, right. And so I did a quick book drive through my town and I figured we'd have a couple hundred books come in and we could save Hempstead a lot of money right. and they wouldn't have to purchase books. Well, after the first week, we had over 3,000 books that came in, wow. Ooh. Wow. which was, was excellent. It was excellent, but it, it did open the door, and, and it really showed me this whole other side where we really had two groups of people that were being helped by this mission. We had one group who has books in their house they no longer need, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's very few places that will accept used books. And on the same side, basically five miles from wherever you live, there are people that are in need of these books. Isn't that amazing? It's incredible the sheer volume of books that are out there. Right. So you just needed one person in the middle who could help bolster and, and build this relationship between the two sides. Right. So that's what the Book Fairies is. Well, I am so glad that you volunteered yourself to be that person in the middle to get the books from the people who had them overflowing in their homes and like you said, just five miles away, a school. We would think a school has books. You, you would hope so. You really do. Yes. And what happens is there's a lot of budgetary constraints, and, and the money is earmarked for different things. And when it comes down to books versus whether it's desks or um, financing the teachers or, or any of the necessary supplies, um, books often fall by the wayside. So it's, a, it's an easy problem in that there's there's a quick fix yes. and that's something that that the community can come together regardless of where you're located can come together to help some of the schools that are in need by supplying them with the books that are already out there fantastic so tell me now at this point you had three thousand in your very first book drive now that you are the book fairies how many books do you give away so my very first year, I did 35,000 books. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Which sounds good, but, but wait. Oh. And now, six years later, we're slated to do half a million books every, every year. Wow. Oh, that's so, amazing. Half a million so books a year? Our first year, you did how many? 30? 30, 35,000. 30, Last month alone, we sent out over 59,000 in March alone. In March alone, 59,000 59, books? I can't alone. believe right. that. And, and so it's, it's a very easy concept of just taking from someone who has and, and giving it to organizations in need. So whether it's school districts, right. homeless shelters, soup kitchens, correctional facilities, but we try and think outside the box and try and find areas where people are accessing on a regular basis, but they may not have that access to books. So we're right. in grocery stores, we're in train stations. Really? Um, yeah, we, we try and just flood communities that have this lack of access. Mm -hmm. And we try and flood the communities with the books that they need because we understand that literacy is that building block. Well, like you said in our first segment, if, if there is no literacy, if we're not able to read and get to that next level and become you know, educated, functioning, contributing to society and to our families. It's right, right, right. So One in four New Yorkers are illiterate. One in four yeah. New Yorkers is illiterate? That's a scary That's number. Incredible. It's a very scary number. It and what scary. I loved about the book fairies and why I was impassioned to become on board is that the impact is so great. Uh, getting the books into the hands of the kids and trying to stop that cycle of kids kids going into adults who are illiterate and unable to read and then where do they, where do they wind up? They wind up um, dropping out of school, they're in jails, they're on the streets and they're not unemployable. So we're trying to get them from an early age but we're also going into, like Amy was saying, the communities that are underserved and trying to get those that might be a little older and get books in their hands and try and get them to, to continue to start reading. Right. Um, but there's much more to the book fairies than just literacy. Uh, we, uh, we recycled 11.8 tons of books and, and um, cardboard last year alone, which wow. is an amazing oh go green. Yes, yes, a, that's huge. It's amazing. And when I was looking at the numbers uh, and what it saves, is it's just 
it's unbelievable. And people come, instead of somebody throwing it in their garbage and it being coming landfill, we actually dispose of it properly. We have waste management organization that we work with, and it gets to the right place, and it gets recycled. So that's one benefit from it. Absolutely. That's so a huge benefit. So we make sure, uh, just to yeah. go on top mm -hmm. of that, that every book that comes in is checked for age and condition because it's not so much about filling up people's bookshelves with books. Right. It's not so much about giving people access to books, but giving them access to high interest current books right. and books that are going to excite that passion to want to read right. instead of giving an, an older copy, a yellowed version, right. um, a water damaged. So right. we make sure that those books find their home also, but that may be in the, the recycling where right, it can right. turn into a new product. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And like you said, that's that's less in the landfills. That's a huge Yeah. We all we all wanna recycle, we all wanna do the right thing environmentally, but we don't always know the right way to do it. So You're that's one right. impact. And then the the books that are um, for overseas, if you want to explain where they go and how we decide whether or not they're going to go there. Overseas, too? So what we found is that we had a, a large number of books that were coming in that were good but not great. Okay. So just like I was talking about, they, they were the yellow, they were a little outdated, so they were books that were not going to be of interest to the kids here. Right. But I had to find a home for them because they still had a great story. Yes. So it's like that cereal box that you see in the grocery store that's banged up, but the cereal inside is still good. Right. So what I did is I, I reached out and I found an amazing organization, the U.S. Africa Children's Fellowship, and the books that are baby through teenage books that still have this great story inside of them. Right. Uh, we partner with this organization and we're building libraries across Ghana, South Africa, Nigeria, and, um, wow. and Zimbabwe. <gasps> that amazing. is amazing. So every book finds a home. Every book every finds Every book a that home. comes in finds a home. And I love the way you described it, that maybe the outside is a little yellowed and banged up, but there is still a fabulous story. Right. Shakespeare's not changing. Harry Potter's not changing. <laughs> Just aesthetically, it may not catch the kids. Right. And <laughs> And... Truly, here on Long Island, you know, our kids have different visual perception. Correct. Correct. You know, and I'm so glad that you're in tune to that because we want the kids to proudly take and carry and read the book so that they will. Right, right. You know, if they won't, if, they, if it looks like something kind of garbagey. We, we understand that um, getting people to read and getting people excited to want to read is only going to increase their ability to make it through the school districts. So we know that through some of the different testing that we've done and partnerings with other schools, if kids read a certain number of words, by the time they hit the state test, they're almost guaranteed to pass. So like you said, whether it's a nonfiction book, whether it's a fiction book, Absolutely. it's the exposure to these words, and they're going to get that through <coughs> these high interest books. Um, and not only are the kids going to grow, but the books then go home where they're enjoyed, the parents are learning how to read using mm -hmm. these books, um, the siblings are using them, <clears throat> excuse me, the families are using them, and then it gets passed down into the neighborhood. Fantastic. I love that. Um, we're just going to take a short break and then find out what we can do to help the book fairies. Thanks. <laughs> When you trust yourself, you have the power to make up your life. Studio 1031 is an environment where excellence is always expected. We work with all types of people from all walks of life. We give deserving women something that they wouldn't give themselves. Come join this makeup movement. When you're feeling down, turn your life around. Make up your life. Do you have a book, either in your head or on your desk, just waiting to get out to anxious readers? Hi, I'm Stephanie Larkin, author, book developer, and head penguin at Red Penguin Books. 
We're a publishing company specializing in books of all genres and publishing in all formats, including digital, audible, and print book. From business books to romance, memoirs to mysteries, our authors have complete control over their books from start to print. We'll help get your book to booksellers all around. Major booksellers such as Amazon, Apple, Kobo, Walmart, even libraries and bookstores around the world. We believe in our authors. So call or email today to get your free publisher's packet to get started. Just visit us at redpenguinbooks.com and get your book out there and into the hands of your readers. At Red Penguin Books, you call all the shots. So call us today and turn your dreams into a reality. Welcome back to Between the Covers. Thanks so much for joining us. While we were on commercial break, we were, I was learning more about the book fairies. What is this about special needs that you do? So we actually have an incredible uh, symbiotic relationship with the special needs community. And what we do is we need a way to get the books to come into the warehouse, sorted and checked for age and condition, oh, okay. and then stocked on the shelves. Right. Uh, so we actually partner with over 40 agencies on Long Island. We have about 180 opportunities a week for the special needs to be involved with us. And they are truly the backbone of our organization. Oh, they allow that. us to spread the gift of of literacy all across Long Island. You're unbelievable. You, you're, you're managing to save the environment, work with special needs people, get books into the hands of those. You really should have little angel wings uh, on the back there. With Absolutely. one and a half employees. Right. With one and a half one employees. And a half employees. What does a half of an employee look like? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> She's fantastic, but she is part-time. She yes. is part-time. Yes. She's a half. Yes. She's a half. Well, as soon as I mentioned to Debbie that we were going to have the book fairies on, she asked if she could bring some books along to donate. Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> the children's room. Oh, oh even, that's awesome. even better. And, and she also mentioned that this oh, is yes. at the library. We have at the library, we have a list. Of people call us and they say, we, you know, we have books. Where can we donate them? Mm -hmm. And we give this out, um, and you're here on the list. Oh, that's wonderful. So that's awesome. Better. Thank you so you're much. Awesome. That's awesome. And I'll tell you something exciting where these books are going to go. What we found is that 50% of the schools that we serve do not have libraries. And so when we get library-bound books, we actually have a separate program to help schools build libraries in, the, in their building. I mean, can you imagine going to school? With no library? With no library. Isn't that unbelievable? So, and with the library books, they're meant to be sturdy with the binding and the exactly. way that they're wrapped. So they'll last through a number of hands. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's yeah, wonderful. That's awesome. yes. Well, thank when I so mentioned much. at home my that the pleasure. book fairies were going to be on the show with me, my husband was thrilled to pieces. So we have a couple of things to donate as well. Kieran, do you have a couple of books for the book fairies? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Kieran, oh thank God. you so much. Oh, those wow. are awesome. <laughs> Just a couple of things. Beautiful. <laughs> I see a Harry Potter in oh, there. Oh, yes, there's wow. a Harry Potter and Rick in Reardon. there. And That's oh, great. Oh, there's, oh, uh, my oh, goodness. Oh, and it keeps coming. It just oh, keeps going. Oh, you, yeah. you have no this idea. This is like Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> you have no like idea. Wow. <laughs> More Harry Potters over here. That's I awesome. already see some that will go to correctional facilities. I see some in here that will go right to the soup <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Karen. That is wonderful. See, and this is what it takes, is a community coming together Absolutely. to support another community. Well, I had put it on our Between the Covers page that we would be collecting books, and we will be collecting books.
folks here at the show every time we are filming. If you come by on Wednesday wow. evening in Massapequa, you even get a free glass of wine when you're bringing your books, and I will make sure that they get over to you. Wonderful. Because Thank you, and Stephanie. Awesome. The thrills. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what a pile. And, and I put it out there, and so many people emailed me to say, I can't make it tonight, but what can I do? So I, of course, told them, Come by, I'll give you wine, I'll give you, you know, you'll give me books. But what else can we do? You want to Tell us. Yeah, sure. So um, based on the sheer numbers, we're one and a half employees. We need lots of help. So we need volunteers to help us. You can work in the warehouse with Amy doing sorting. Great. That's Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays between 10 and 3. Uh -huh. um, we have other volunteer opportunities that are on our website for people if they want to help out. There's a number of things that we need help. Outreach, ambassadors, people who want to uh, speak on behalf of our mission and go, because we are we can't be everywhere, but right. someone wants to learn about that. That's why we have to put you on TV, because you can't be everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> so you can volunteer, you can I'm donate your books. I'm just going to move these lower a little people bit, can do, um, just so we can see Amy. Book drives. <laughs> Community service. We have opportunities for community service. We have a book sorting this Sunday where kids are uh, coming in and doing uh, community service as well. We have corporations that come in and do sorting for the corporations. Mm -hmm. uh, and last but not least is we need funding. Um, and every day I'm there, I'm absolutely shocked and amazed at the amazing program that Amy has created by herself with a handful of volunteers. But at the crux of it, we need funding. A lot of what we have now needs to be built up and stabilized, and that can't happen without funding. Absolutely. Uh, we, she mentioned we did just short under 500,000 books last year alone, but that, without a doubt, could be a million books Without a doubt. We have right. teachers that are asking us, when can I come and get some free books? We have wait lists for Ooh, teachers. The teachers can come in and get free books? Teachers are allowed Absolutely. to come in once a month. We open it up, and there's a wait list for those teachers. They wow. come in with their luggage. They fill their luggage up with books. It could be 10 books. It could be 1,000 books. We've seen teachers with their entire truck filled with books. Um, so those are really great opportunities. Right. But we can't continue. We, those wait lists will continue to happen. Schools that wait for us to come in and give these free libraries and things like that, we need the infrastructure and we need the staffing and the um, computer IT equipment to be able to do that. So we need funding. So okay. if you know of any individuals, corporations, that we would be considered a charity of choice. And as we said before, it's a three for one. We're doing literacy, we're doing recycling. And we're helping the special needs and partnering, not helping. We're partnering, partnering. with the I amazing. love that. I we're love partnering. that you partner with them. They're, mm -hmm. they're unbelievable. That's just amazing. And, and we want to keep, kids are in the system. They're in the system. We want to keep them out of the system. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. We want to keep, we wanna keep them out Absolutely. of the system. Absolutely. Okay. So. okay, so books, hands, yep. bodies, books, hands, money. Cash, cash money. <laughs> cash money. Absolutely. Yes. Um, go over to thebookfairies.org mm -hmm. and you'll see all of these possibilities for donating your time, your money, your books. They're doing everything but blood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think you, you, you shed a few. Oh, right, right. You, you shed, shed some blood. Shed some, <laughs> some, some blood, some tears. I, I'm sure there were some paper cuts and all that sorting uh, that was going absolutely, on. So, absolutely. so you're absolutely giving it's, some blood. It's an amazing office. mission, and it's really impactful here in the New York metropolitan area it, and overseas. And, and it's just, I can't say enough about it. I know I get paid, but I'm just every day amazed, and I feel blessed to be a part of it. Well, ever since... And in awe of what she has accomplished, because it's outstanding. Ever since I found out about it, which I is know. just a yeah, few weeks ago when, when you and I spoke, hour. and I said, you're kidding. Everything. Is that what they're doing? I've been telling everyone, do you know they gave 45,000 books last week? Last yeah. month, I was, yeah. I've been spewing that number. It's, I had no idea about the other numbers. That yeah. one stuck in my head. 45,000 yeah. books last month. It's hard to get it into an elevator speech, because the impact is so great and it's secondary and tertiary effects that it's hard to get it into an elevator speech. So you always have to say, let me tell you more. Absolutely. So absolutely. Go to thebookfairies.org so that you can sign up to be a volunteer, cash donor, give books. Um, certainly we will make sure that on the Between the Covers TV.com website will always be a Book Fairies link so that you can go over there and you can stop by here anytime with your books. We would love to have them and we will make sure that we don't deliver them right to you so that you don't need any more manpower just to get them from here. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to take a short break and then I want to hear from these fabulous readers what they've been reading lately. We'll be right back. <laughs> Me llaman Tan Pablo y hace más de 20 años me enamoré de una colombiana. Viajé a su país y conocí un estilo de café 
muy distinto, muy especial. Ahora tostamos cafés excelentes, con alturas y microclimas diferentes, resultado en una taza muy compleja y muy rica, un sabor nuevo en el mundo. Fue un éxito. And I even got to keep the girl. Inspired by aerobic classes and a dream, Body by Tamika has helped hundreds of women reach their fitness goals. One size doesn't fit all and neither should your fitness experience. Body by Tamika is about creating an environment where women can come together to work out, meet new friends, and get inspired. Whether you desire to lose weight, tone up, or prepare for a mommy makeover, Body by Tamika is here to help. Body by Tamika is considerate to female weight loss challenges resulting from pregnancy and or life changes that can be extremely resistant to diet and exercise. For stubborn problem areas, Body by Tamika offers non-invasive aesthetic procedures such as laser lipo and wood slimming body contour. Book your free consultation today to see for yourself. Are you a Thai lover? You love the diversity in ties because they come in different colors, fabrics, patterns, etc. Get access to a wide variety of neckties. Buy from or trade with other Thai lovers. Don't wear ties anymore? You have more ties than you know what to do with? Want to turn all those ties into real money? Do you just need a tie? You just need a tie for a special occasion. Now you can buy a tie today and sell it tomorrow. The Necktie Exchange, the online retailer where you buy, sell, and trade neckties. Register today. Mayama. Welcome back to Between the Covers. Well, if this is a book show, we've got tons of books. We're loving, loving having all of those. But our book fairies and our librarians and all of our, our experts here also love to read. Absolutely. So I had asked you, since you love to read, if, what you would be recommending. Eileen, what did you bring along? The Last Mrs. Parrish. It was referred to me by my best friend who is a, reads a book or two a day. I don't know. She a has book the or time. two a day? She has the time. Oh she my God. is great, Jeanette. She's great. She loves wow. this. And she referred this to me. And now, it very, is very it good. fiction, nonfiction? What is it? It's fiction. Okay. Um, and it's, what's interesting, what I liked about it, was interesting to me, is that Liv Constantine, the writer, is actually two sisters who live three states apart. And write together. They FaceTime. They wow. yes. They FaceTime. They email. No sibling rivalry there. That's no, good. No, I thought that that was that is amazing. Fabulous. So that Absolutely. was kind of a little fun tidbit about the book, okay. but it was very good. Is that a library book? Yes. Oh, I love that. Yes. Yay! Massapequa Shout out to library. our libraries, <laughs> Massapequa I Library. I missed the Massapequa Library, Massapequa Mobile. Oh. The library. Oh. Well, uh, the book, like yes. <laughs> I know. I'm well, trying. I've got to try and get that. Well, I am so happy to always give a shout out to our libraries. So thank yeah, you for bringing the library. Book. library. You can order it in advance. They hold it for you. It's good stuff. Fantastic. What did you bring along, Amy? So I brought around, along The Lost Girls of Paris. Which I had on my short list, too. To it read. was excellent. It was excellent. Uh, it gave an interesting, different view of World War II and the female spies that were used to transmit information back. They were from England and they infiltrated into Paris to send information back about what was what the Germans were doing. So fantastic. Just give you a different spin on the typical World War II books. Love it. Love it. And you know, when I ask a librarian to bring a book recommendation, um, she brought piles and piles <laughs> of book recommendations. I'm like, we have two minutes on the show to do a book recommendation. Well, so tell us about your book recommendations. Okay. Well, and I'm holding a pile of cat books. Well, those here. are cat series. Cat series. Books. I didn't know before you that there was such a thing is a cat series so I'm so excited because I love cats and this is also this is um, Molly Hunt's 
Cat's Eyes. It's the first of her series, her crazy cat lady mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be on the panel with me at the Cat Writers Association, so I thought I'd bring her book. Oh, home. that's fantastic. A good and shout out has, to her. I think Absolutely. she has three or four in the series like I do. That's so. fabulous. And you have... And uh, I have... I have Rita Mae Brown. Right. Whisker uh, of Pie Evil. Brand. Right. I have Carol Nelson Carol Douglason. Midnight, Douglas. Midnight Louie is the right. cat. And, and Joe Gray. Yes. For Shirley Murphy. I met her in person also, and I know Carol Douglas. That's fantastic. Well, thank you. All of these fabulous authors. And these are standalones. This one I'm currently reading, Joy Fielding. Uh, all the Wrong Places. What I like about Joy Fielding, if you've ever read her before, mm -hmm. her twists at the end are really something. I like a book with a twist where you don't expect Well, you it. write those kinds of mysteries, And this one's mysteries about too. a serial killer who's uh, targeting uh, online w women who are seeking online dating. Oh. Hmm. So, that's interesting. This one I really like, The Hunting Party, and I recommend that to a friend by Lucy Foley. Okay. Because you don't know who the victim is or, or the killer. In other words, not only don't you know who's doing it, but you don't know who was killed. So really? It, it, that, I really, it's a oh, really... Oh, so it's a double mystery almost. Yes. And it has wow. a twist at the end. And, and you like that twist at the end. And I also, yes, and I really love uh, Lisa Diaz-Meyer, who's in the audience today. Oh, wow. She is a friend of mine. And Thank all you. And shattered. This is my favorite. She has three. This is my favorite, but they're all good. And they have a continuing storyline, but they're short stories and poems. It's dark fiction. It's a little different than what I write, but it's it's very good reading. So well, I, I am certainly it. hoping that Lisa is going to be a guest on our show oh, yes. Yes. so yes. that we can learn more about her and, and her dark fiction. I'm intrigued already. Yes. Fantastic. Well, I love that you're reading. <laughs> and, of course, you're reading. You're a librarian. <laughs> Now, are you in the adult section? The children's? Adult. Adult reference. Okay, adult reference. I did a little bit in children's when I started, but I'm now I'm full-time in it. I've been an adult for over 20 years. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. Any tips for our audience members as far as if they say, because so many people, oh, I wish I had time to read. So my biggest tip that I can give is that you need to think outside the box, and reading is not necessarily a book. Okay. So my right. husband says he doesn't read. And I say, but you read the newspaper every day. That's you right. You read CNN every day. Yes. So think outside. Exactly. It's everything from comic books to blogs, any form of reading. Short it stories, doesn't, right. poems, right. it does not have to right. be a, a like traditional that. book. Amy said something when I first walked into uh, book fairies. She said, kids say I don't like reading. And she said, I it's what you're saying? If so it, it's actually J.K. Rawlings has said it. If, if you say you don't like reading, it's because you haven't met the right book yet. Right. Mm -hmm. I love That's that. That's true. Well, with uh, a half a million books a year, you are making darn sure that they meet the right book. Absolutely. Yes. And that's yes. just fabulous. Uh, just remind us again where we're going to find you so that the audience can help. You can go to our website at www.thebook.com bookfairies.org okay and uh, well or you can see us look us up on Facebook at the book fairies oh okay right. there's on a Facebook fa page. we have a Facebook page that's really it's a great opportunity for you to see the impact of what we're doing we post every day every other day something that's happening you can see our the corporations that are coming in and sponsoring us and doing corporate sorting you can see uh, some of the, um, the sort kids the kids coming books. in teachers the free book fairs I went, there were kindergartners and, and nursery school. They were holding the books and saying, oh. I could take this home. They were shocked that they could take it home. They I were so that. excited. They wanted us to read it to them right away. The love impact it. is like, it's tangible. You can see it. You okay, can feel so it. Okay, so thebookfairies.org and Debbie D. Louise. Dot com. Dot com. And I have the fa Facebook page also. Okay. And from my website, you can also subscribe to my newsletter. Fantastic. So you can find our fairies and our author online. Please visit them and please enjoy reading. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>